Welcome to Electrum Online. Our next chapter deals with probability in statistics. Now, there is a study in probability, there is a study in statistics, and then there's a crossover where they're related to each other. But we're going to look at probability more from a viewpoint of statistics because we have what we call theoretical probability and then we have what we call experimental probability. And let's try to find the difference between them in this first video. So let's say that we take two coins and we toss them 10 times. What are the possible outcomes? Well, we could have the first coin being head, the second coin being head as well, or the first coin being head and the second a tail, or the first being a tail and the second coin being a head, or the first being a tail and the second being a tail. So those are the four possible outcomes, and every outcome has an equal probability of occurring, at least Theoretically, will that actually be the case? Well, we'll see in just a moment. But since they have an equal probability of occurring from a theoretical point of view, we can say that the probability here is 0.25, the probability here is 0.25, the probability here is 0.25, and the probability there is 0.25. If we combine these two here, we can see that there's a 50% probability that one of them will be head and the other one will be a tail if we don't care what the order of them was. So we can, have, we can look at the outcomes in a different way. We can say, What's the probability of two heads occurring, the probability of one head occurring, and the probability of zero head occurring? You can see that this is the situation where we have this outcome, and this is the situation where we have this outcome, and to get this, we can have either one of these two outcomes. Now, we typically call a multitude of outcomes more than one, we can call that an event. But Sometimes there's a gray area between the term outcome and event, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. So from a theoretical perspective, we can say that the probability of getting two heads is 0.25, which is 25%. The probability of getting one head, either one or the other coin, that's 0.50, which is equal to 50%. And the probability of getting no heads with two coins, that's also 0.25, or 25%. Now, we graphed the theoretical probability here, 25% for, and of course I should call that uh, two heads, one head, the probability there is 50%, and zero head, the probability again is 25%. But when we do an experiment, when we do this 10 times, is that what we're going to get? And that's the difference between theoretical an experimental probability. Experimentally, it turned out the two heads occurred three times, one head occurred six times, and no heads occurred one time. In other words, 30% of the time we got two heads, 60% of the time we got one head, and 10% of the time we got uh, zero heads. And if I graph that, you can see that there was a significant difference between the experimental result and the theoretical results. Hmm, that is kind of a problem, especially this one right here, where we're expecting 25% and we only got 10%. It almost looks like the, prob the probability, at least the theoretical probabilities, were nowhere close to what we actually got. Well, what should we do to get the theoretical results to be closer to the experimental results, or better said, the experimental results to be closer to the theoretical results. Well, maybe instead of only doing it 10 times, we should have done a thousand times, maybe just a hundred times, but to be sure, a thousand times, would the actual results be much closer to the theoretical results? They probably would be. So the study about doing the, what we call the statistics on probability would be to see, well, how many times should we toss it so that the experimental results are reasonably close to the theoretical results? And what would be the difference depending upon the number of tosses? Those are the kind of things that we're going to be looking into in the videos to come. But at least at this point, we can see the difference between the two, experimental versus theoretical. So, if you like this kind of thing, stay tuned and we'll have a lot more videos to come.